Hi everyone, it's Miss Olson, and today we're going to be sculpting our Chihuly inspired Makia bowls. So you're going to start with a slab um, cut from our clay. There will be slip nearby. There will also be texture plates nearby and a box of tools. In your toolbox, you will see Q-tips for carving, um, forks for imprinting. There's also some um, marker caps that you can imprint with and some radial design pieces. Um, so what we're going to do first is make sure that our slab is big enough and that our name is on it. So you have a template nearby that looks like a plate. It's like a small version of a, or a big version of a bowl. Um, we're going to be, you can stand if you need to. We're gonna be rolling out our slab first and as you're rolling, you wanna have a template nearby to see if it's large enough. You can continue to flip the slab and roll your rolling pin out. Use both hands. Again, you can stand into it. It's not going to be stretched out enough. Think of rolling out like a cookie sheet until you flip it to fit the entire template like this. So we want to stretch always. If it's getting too long, going one way, you want to continue to rotate it. Think about if you were making a pizza or something. You want to make it as big and circular as you can. So if it's not getting stretched out in one direction, and you want to roll it out in that direction and spread it. So I think I'm almost big enough. Now, it gets, if it gets bigger than the plate, you're good. Don't even cut it. You want to use all of your clay. If you do want it to be perfectly circular, we could trim it or cut it down a little bit, but I'm going to try it in the bowl first before I make that decision to cut anything. If you did want coils in your design, you can also make that decision of cutting. But again, we're going to try it out first because these forms are meant to be organic. You don't really want them all to look the same or be circular. So we've rolled it out enough so we have a large form. Now in the bottom, what we want to do is we want to write our name. I'm going to have a circle tool for you, probably a cup or a little circle, to press in gently on the bottom, on the center. This is going to give you, ignore the paint, this is going to give you a place for you to write your name. It's also going to be where we do not put glaze later on. So again, let me show you what that looks like after I made that imprint. So we want to press in the center so that we can write our name and our class code there. If you do not do this, you may not get your bowl back. I will tell you that now. It's happened before. It'll happen again if you do not write your name. So we're going to press that imprinting tool in towards the center. We're going to write our name first and last so it's readable. Take your time. My first name's Miss Olson. And my class code, I'm going to write CC. You write your full class code first. It could be 1S or 3BUB, whatever it is, write it. All right, so you will see that as this form turns to the other side, it starts to look more like that Machia bowl. But we need a bowl. So we can't have a bowl if it's just flat. So you're going to have a bowl to place your Machia formation into. And again, this is why we kind of wanted to leave it more organic and not carve it or cut it. So we are going to form it out and I will put more examples, but your sides of your bowl formation might be really wavy. You might be inspired by those and want it to be really symmetrical. Or you might be inspired more like his jelly forms and you might, might want it more loose. I want to do like a happy medium. So I was happy when it was kind of wavy, but not all the same. Now in the center, we will be glazing a radial design. So if you want to leave it smooth, you can start smoothing it out. But if you want to use your tools to start imprinting more of a radial design to glaze into, that's what I'm going to do. Then you may do that. I'm going to do my center point, And then I'm going to start to do imprints coming out from that point. Um, while your bowl is flat, if you want, you can also take it out and try more imprinting. 
before you put it in the bowl. So we could, for example, do our imprints before we place it. Now the other thing you have are these texture plates. The texture plates can be pressed in, press really hard. This is giving kind of a checkered texture. You could do the whole thing. You can do it in different sections. But the texture is going to make the glaze happen in different colors. So I'm going to start with one texture. And then I found this other swishy texture, which looks really cool. I'm going to press that one into the center now. Press really hard. You can stand up again, use your thumbs to make the texture really strong. And I really like that. And then I'm going to start using my fork, actually. And we should really just, again, you can try out the uh, slab into the bowl. This is called a slab. But your radial design is easier to do when it's flat. And then putting it into the bowl at the end will be the best way to go. And again, we have some marker caps and some other imprinting tools. There should be some um, little tessellation pieces which can make triangular forms as well, which I will show you in one moment. And you could even, if you're more of a drawer, you might put some, tri uh, some drawings into your design. But the imprints are what are going to make your bowl stand out and be more unique. It's also going to be what helps your glaze to look more intricate. So do your radial design coming out from the center. This will give you a guideline for your glaze to go on when you start that process. And I have a little bit of redness there with my paint chip that fell off and my imprinting tool. That's fine. It will burn off in the kiln. Double check that your name is still there. Mine is smushed out. So I need to rewrite my name carefully in that center circle. I'm going to write my name again. That will be the last thing that we do before we put it in the bowl, is to double check that we have that circular form and our name in class code. Because if it gets smudged out, we're in trouble when it gets out of the kiln. You may not get yours back. And then we want to decide on our Machia form. In the end, the last thing we will do is say, how do I want this to dry? So take some time to think about it. Smooth out your edges at the tops. Um, again, we could think about adding coils. So if you wanted to add a coil, you would roll out a snake-like formation. You could decide on how you want it to come out and you can blend it, score, slip, and blend it. So this is not going to stick unless I do little X's into the clay and then get my slip. Which again, many people will probably not do this part, but I'm just giving you the option. Grab some slip. I'm just going to do like one. And then a blend is taking a wooden tool and pressing it together so that it stays. So score, slip, blend. It's kind of random, but I just want a little... Yeah, again, you don't have to have that part. Try it out, up to you. I'm gonna use a Q-tip to just smooth out my edges or my finger and make sure everything that's on here will be there when it dries. So if there's like a little nick or sharp edge, it will still be there later. You get some water from the top of the slip and use it to smooth out your edges. All right, I hope you have a wonderful time making your Machia bowl. We will be glazing these next class using our contrasting color scheme that we chose. And have a great art class. I will see you next time. This is mine.